Today we'll be covering Chapter 36, Multisystem Trauma and Trauma in Special Patients. We'll be using the Pre-Hospital Emergency Care 11th edition, and this is brought to you by Southern Star Health Education. Some of the things we're going to be covering, uh, we're going to be covering multi-system trauma, trauma in special patient populations, and an assessment-based approach to multi-system trauma and trauma in special patient populations. Involvement of multiple body systems in trauma makes management of the trauma patient more challenging. There are special considerations in assessment and management of pediatric, geriatric, pregnant, and cognitively impaired trauma patients. A patient is considered to have multi-system trauma when more than one major system is involved. Significant forces increase the risk of four injuries to multiple systems. Morbidity and mortality are higher in patients with multi-system trauma and the risk of developing shock is higher with multi-system trauma patients. For multi-system trauma patients depends on the system involved. The definite care is often surgery. Principles of pre-hospital multi-system trauma care. Ensure safety of personnel and patient. Determine additional resources needed. Understand kinematics. Identify and manage life threats. Manage the airway while maintaining uh, cervical spine stabilization and support ventilation and oxygenation if needed. Control external hemorrhage and treat for shock, perform secondary assessment and obtain a medical history, splint skeletal injuries and maintain spine motion restriction if needed and make transport decisions quickly. Trauma in pregnant patients anatomic and physiologic considerations in the pregnant trauma patient. It is difficult to assess the fetus, so manage the mother aggressively. The blood volume is increased by at least 50% in late pregnancy by the third trimester. The heart rate increases by 10 to 15 beats per minute by the third trimester, and the uterus becomes highly vascular. The diaphragm is elevated. Pain perception in the abdomen is altered decreased gastric motility and increased risk of vomiting and the uterus and bladder are at greater risk of injury. Some considerations for the pregnant trauma patient. They're more, the more severe the injury to the mother, the greater the chances of fetal injury. Fetal death rates are nine times higher than maternal death rates following trauma. Assessment considerations of the pregnant trauma patient. The most common problem caused by maternal trauma is uterine contractions that may actually progress into labor. Abrupto placenta and premature separation of the placenta from the uterine wall also occurs. Fetal and maternal outcomes from motor vehicle collisions are more favorable when the mother wears a seatbelt. Uterine rupture may occur as a result of motor vehicle trauma. It can actually result in maternal and fetal death. Distress can be caused by hypoxia or hypovolemia, but signs of shock can be delayed or masked in pregnant patients. Attempt resuscitation of the pulseless pregnant trauma patient according to your protocols. Management considerations for the pregnant trauma patient. When spine motion restriction is required, tilt the spine board to the left to prevent spine hypotensive syndrome. Airway ventilation and oxygenation are critical to the pregnant trauma patient. EMTs should anticipate vomiting and have suction readily available. Assist inadequate ventilations, administer oxygen and maintain as high as, as PO2 as possible. The fetus can be severely hypoxic before the mother actually shows signs of hypoxia. In circulation, check for major bleeding. Absorb vaginal bleeding with a pad, do not pack the vagina, and anticipate and treat for shock. Consider ALS intercept 
or air medical transport for major trauma involving the pregnant patients. Anticipate the need for additional resources if delivery is imminent. Time. Click on the intervention that is required to prevent supine hypotensive syndrome when managing a pregnant trauma patient. A. Fill all voids beneath the patient's back with padding when applying a long backboard. Administer oxygen at 15 liters per minute by non rebreather mask to all pregnant trauma patients. Tilt the long backboard to the patient's left once the straps have actually been applied or transport the patient in semi followers position with the knees and hips flexed. In supine hypotensive syndrome, you should tilt the long backboard to the patient's lifts once the strap's actually been applied. Trauma in pediatric patients. Mechanisms include drowning, burns, falls, penetrating trauma, motor vehicle collisions, and pedestrian vehicle collisions. Children are at risk of being abused by adults also. Shaken baby syndrome is one of the many causes of brain injury. Anatomic physiological considerations in the pediatric patient. Uh, traumatic forces are more widely distributed in the pediatric patient. Pediatric patients have heavy heads and weak necks and muscles. Infants and children have greater chest wall flexibility than adults. Children are frequently victims of major and minor trauma. Assessment considerations for the pediatric trauma patient. The pediatric assessment triangle, PAT, helps with formation of general impression. PAT is assessed assesses the appearance, work of breathing and circulation to the skin, and PALS assesses the con consciousness, breathing, and color of the skin. Subtle changes in heart rate, blood pressure, and skin perfusion may indicate cardiorespiratory failure. A slow heart rate may indicate hypoxia, assess brachial pulses, and blood pressure readings are difficult to obtain in children three years of age or younger. Supine motion restriction, pat beneath the child who is younger than eight years of age from the shoulders to the hips to prevent neck flexion. Open the airway and assess for any possible obstructions like gurgling, strider, which basically indicate upper airway obstruction. Assess circulation and control direct bleeding, manage hypovolemia and shock, prevent hypothermia, transport to, a, in a, to an appropriate facility, and continually reassess the patient. In geriatric patients, the risk of death is, and significant injury is greater than for younger patients. The number of physiological changes predispose the elderly to injuries. Falls are the most common cause of injury, and many falls are the results of medical conditions. Anatomical and physiological considerations in the geriatric trauma patient. Changes to the pulmonary, cardiovascular, neurological, and musculoskeletal system occur with aging. Those changes make injury more likely and make it harder for the elderly patient to compensate when uh, injury occurs. Pre-existing medical conditions and medications affect the patient's outcome. Altered mental status and a significant, is a significant sign. Be alert to airway obstruction from dentures and impaired uh, cough reflex. Use padding when spine motion restriction is necessary. Maintain a clear airway and be prepared to suction. Support ventilation as needed to maintain the SPO2 greater than 95%. Cognitive impaired patients are more prone to trauma. Conditions include dementia, autism, brain injury, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, and Down syndrome. Cognitive impairment can affect assessment and management.
A Down syndrome patient may have a mild to moderate developmental impairment. You may have, you may have to rely on the pa uh, parent or other caregivers to help reassure the patient and to provide information about the patient's history. Anatomical physiological considerations in the cognitive impaired trauma patient. Physiological changes can accompany some forms of cognitive impairment depending on the underlying cause. Many patients have sensory loss related to aging and disease. History and consent may be difficult to obtain. First attempt to get information from the patient. Rely on others for information if needed. Patients may be confused, upset, or actually uncooperative. Pain perception may be altered. Gain information through the trauma assessment, reassess frequently, and maintain a high index of suspicion that impairment results from injury rather than the pre-existing condition. Management, uh, involve the caregivers to increase cooperation, err on the side of caution, and treat if the patient has a head injury. Assess mechanisms of injury, suspect injury of more than one body system, identify whether the patient belongs to any special patient population, do not assume altered mental status is due to a pre-existing condition. Suspect spinal injury, provide inline stabilization, assess mental status, establish an airway using a jaw thrust maneuver, anticipate vomiting, be prepared to suction. Then for adequately breathing patients, provide positive pressure ventilation if breathing is inadequate. For bradycardic pediatric patients, assist ventilations. Assessment, physical exam, perform a rapid secondary assessment. Anticipate altered reactions to pain among special patient populations. Vital signs and pain are vital signs. Normal vital signs are based on the patient's age or the age group. History, when and how did the, uh, the incident occur? What is the chief complaint? Are there any signs and symptoms associated with trauma? Is the patient pregnant? If so, how far along is she? Is there any vaginal bleeding or crowning? How old is the patient? Does the patient take any medications? Is the patient allergic to anything? What is the patient's medical history? Is there a history of previous trauma or a cognitive impairment? New standard precautions established that maintain the inline civilization. For third semester pregnancy, tilt the backboard to the left. For children younger than eight years old, pat from the shoulders to the, to the hips. And for the elderly, elderly, pat voids beneath the back when putting them on. Use a jaw thrust maneuver. Be prepared to suction, administer oxygen, and monitor the airway, breathing, pulse, and mental status for deterioration. Emergency medical care. Control bleeding, treat for shock, identify and treat other injuries. Transport immediately. Notify the receiving facility, consider a request for ALS, and reassess vital signs every five minutes. Case study. Oh, pizza's done. Case study. Excited to hear the approach of the ice cream truck in this neighborhood. Seven-year-old Russ Moffat runs into the street to look for it. He fails to see the car approaching from the opposite direction until it's too late. Turning towards it at the last second, the bumper strikes Russ on the torso, causing his head to impact the hood before throwing him down to the ground as the driver speed screeches the car to a halt. Does age affect the type of distribution of his injuries? How might Russ's injuries present differently from the same injuries in an adult patient? What differences are required in the assessment and management of this patient as compared to an adult?
EMTs arrive and as they approach to apply inline stabilization to the spine and open the airway, they note a pale patient who appears unresponsive and who has labored breathing. One EMT uses the jaw thrust maneuver to open up the airway and another completes a primary assessment. The EMTs insert an oropharyngeal airway and begin assisting ventilations and administer supplemental oxygen. Russ has several superficial abrasions and minor lacerations, but no major external bleeding. The EMTs perform a rapid secondary assessment and provide spine motion restriction padding padding from the shoulders to the hips to maintain the neck in neutral alignment. The EMTs are transporting within six minutes of arriving and immediately notify the receiving hospital. They continue management of the airway and breathing and keep Russ warm, as well as obtaining a baseline vital signs. Russ is stabilized at level three trauma center and then flown to a children's hospital for further management. Although he faces months of rehabilitation, the quick action of the EMTs provide him with the best uh, opportunity for a full recovery. Summary. Suspect multi-system trauma of any patient who has been subjected to a significant external force. Use the golden principles of trauma care to manage patients with multi-system trauma. Relations of patients require additional assessments and management considerations. The EMT must incorporate knowledge of all the special needs of these people or these patients into the care provided to the patient.